right. How about another round of applause for our great host, Miss Joey Washington, everybody. Is she doing great? Right? Oh man, I'm excited. Thank you. How are we doing? We doing good? Yeah, that's right. I gotta tell you, I'm from Long Island, so I always love traveling to the city, especially a place as sick as Dangerfield, man. I just love traveling in general. In fact, I actually just got back from Jersey for a few days ago, so for everybody in the front row wondering what that smell is, I apologize. Uh, listen, I love Jersey. I'm actually, my mom's actually from Jersey, and I got a lot of family down there, so I always love to go there, especially when I get to see my little goddaughter, Katrina. I mean, she's just adorable. This seven-year-old white girl, I swear she would have thought she was a Gerber baby when she was growing up, I swear. But And the best thing is, when I go down there, they just start, her and her sisters just started to learn cursing. And so, you know that feeling when you see a child curse for the first time? It's like watching the first snowfall of winter. There's more that's going to come, but just that first little bit, oh, you can't miss it. It's beautiful. So this happened when I happened to be visiting over. They like to play these stupid little games, because again, they're all, uh, they're three girls under the age of ten. I could throw a ball in a field and maybe... Uh, they'd be fine for three hours, trust me. So they like to play this game where they have their hands out, they close their eyes, and they have to guess what the object is in their hands. So Katrina, my sweet little goddaughter, she has her hands open, she closes her eyes, and her older sister, Sabrina, brings her her jewelry box from her room, and she gets it right. Now this is where it starts. Uh, Sabrina, since I got it right, could you put this away for me? Remind me, this is a sweet seven-year-old little girl. And her older sister, with the sass and swag of a middle-aged Puerto Rican mom from the Bronx, just takes two steps forward, turns around, lifts the bird, and says, Fuck you! <laughs> Guys, I'll be honest with you. I have never in my life been more proud of a family member. My goodness, oh, she's a champ already. It's like watching Rembrandt paint before your eyes. And that's a Jersey girl, let me tell you, let me tell you, that really is. And I love those kids, man, but I'm kind of nervous, especially because they just started to go to Catholic school. Now, I don't know about you guys, and I'm not trying to insult Catholics, I mean, I'm a Catholic too, but Catholic girls, they can be crazy. They can do some crazy shit. Like, for example, in my hometown, how many of you guys have ever dealt with something like this? A concrete statue of Jesus in your church is missing all ten of its fingers. That's right, Jesus Christ sends fingers. Like, what the fuck? Hasn't the guy been through enough already? Literally, Jesus Christ. And the best part is the cops have no idea what is happening. They have no leads. They don't know what's going on. I, however, do have a theory. Now, I'm not saying it's concrete, but I bet, I bet $1,000 right now that it was some high schoolers trying to get ready for their senior prank. They take a piece of the fingers and they each have necklaces and do that whole sisterhood in the traveling pants thing, except this time they're taking a trip to the Vatican. <laughs> And man, I gotta tell you, you know damn well after this first senior year, they got one of the girls like Kelsey or something like Mackenzie or Amber, like one of those, going to Arizona State her freshman year. She's struggling. She's, it's only the first month of school, but she's failed three classes. The freshman 15 is coming on. She already spent most of her money on weed, and she's already lost every single game of beer pong. She's just crying at her door like, I miss my friends so much. <laughs> But she has that little Jesus finger. She'll always remember her time in high school. <laughs> uh, guys, I gotta be honest with you, there is nothing I love more than performing in front of a beautiful crowd like this. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out here and supporting all these great comments. Yeah, this is fun, man. So we got any single ladies in the club tonight? Come on, ladies, come on, make some noise, make some noise. All right, oh baby, who said that? <laughs> Maybe we could FaceTime or something like that. I'm not ready for a commitment. <laughs> oh man, but listen, I'm very, I'm hard today. I'm a hard today guy, I gotta admit, because I'm that certain type of picky and desperate that's just ruined everything for me. And listen, 
I don't mean to be insulting, but I'm very particular about the type of women I date. You see, I like my women how I like my coffee. Mentally stimulating. And listen, ladies, I know I'm not no prize in either. This is true. This is true. I mean, how many people after a night of drinking would want to turn over, hung over shit, and see the love child of Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson looking back at you? It's rough, man. Wow, you know, last night was great. Yeah, you were really, you really had a fun time. Yeah, we should go get some breakfast. Wow. There's a bistro down the block. We could probably get some eggs. Yeah. Listen, I work it. I work it. I got the Ben Stiller radio ears. I can pick up some XM on these things sometimes. So it's pretty good for me. It's pretty good. I know it. Oh, my God. I'm telling you right now, guys, growing up is a little bit of a struggle. I'm 23 years old right now. I've just started graduate school. It's right. Oh, look, listen. I want to hear no applause or nothing. Unless you're helping me pay the tuition bill, <laughs> just keep stay silent. I appreciate it, though. And one of the things, too, I'm trying to be more charitable. I realize, you know, I got a lot of fortunate things in my life, so I want to try to give back. So like, for example, for the month of April, I was able to help raise $350 for Autism Awareness Organization. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And in fact, I even went a step further. I grew my hair out. Again, you see this white, nice white boy cut professional look. For one year, I grew my hair out. This shit was past my shoulders. I looked like I was freaking Kurt Cobain or something, man. I, I say that I was because I was going to donate it to Locks of Love until I had a conversation with another cousin in Jersey. So when, I, when they found out about it, they were kind of worried. So my cousin went up to me. So um, I don't know if you know, but there's a rumor going around that you're donating your hair to Locks of Love. Um, yeah, you know, I just want to try to help out people. I think it'd be cool besides... I mean, what woman wouldn't want to have a boy just lock her head like this? Well, I just want to throw something by you, if that's okay. So let's say you do donate your hair. They make a wig out of it. Some person gets it. Now, what if that person just so happened to be a bald death robber and a whole crew of his guys, they're playing this major heist, and then they get away with it, they rob the money and everything, but a hair follicle falls off on the ground. And you know damn well they're going to use their computerized BSI shit to try to type it into the machine, and they're going to be able to find it's your hair. How do you know they're not going to bring the crime back to you? And it was at that moment I nearly shit myself. Who the fuck comes up with a theory like that? What the hell? I mean, honestly, like, if that was the case, then all these uh, RuPaul Drag Race rejects would be the greatest bank ice crew of all time. But guys, I almost got to go soon, but I just want to say this. To be able to do Sam comedy is a huge dream. I'm very lucky, but I'll be honest with you, forming stand-up on a Saturday night here, as lovely as you guys are, it's not really my dream. So can I tell you guys my dream? I feel like we've connected a little bit. I can say it. Please do? Oh, yes. Yeah, queen. Absolutely. See, my dream, I, Mr. Michael Zillman, want to get high with Christopher Walken. Now, I may ask you, why would you want to get high with Christopher Walken? Dude, have you seen his movies? If he's like that sober, imagine what he's like when he's high. Whoa. I have a premonition. You take the word Jeep and you flip it upside down. The P looks like a B and the J looks like an R. Ah. B-E-E-R. What does that spell? Boom! Now, my dudes, I got a fever and the only cure is Domino's. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mike Zimmerman. You can find me on Instagram at MZIN96. Let's bring up our host, Joey Washington.